Hey guys, my name is Leah Bloom and I got Pastor Jay with me today and we are going to do a prayer part two. So if you remember in prayer part one, we defined what prayer is and then we talked a little bit about how to pray. There's three categories. We pray for God, for yourself, and for others. If you haven't seen that yet, I would highly suggest it. And today we're going to talk about how to hear from God. So communication is a two-way street, and this works with prayer too. And since communication is a two-way street and we want to communicate with you guys, we're going to ask you to put all your questions and comments in the chat box that you either see below you or off to the right. Um, make sure that you hit us up with questions. We'd love to answer them for you. Um, as we talk about prayer, if you have prayer requests, please feel free to put those over there as well. Typically in, in a classroom, we would do this stuff at the end of class, but since we're virtual, uh, we're just going to ask you to put all those comments in the chat box, and we'll be communicating with you that way. And as Leah mentioned, communication is definitely a two-way street. And so prayer is really us communicating with God. We're revealing ourselves to him and going to him and asking him for our needs. But God also speaks to us. You know, one of the ways that God speaks to us is through his word. Um, but he, he speaks to us, and we have to learn to listen to his voice. Jesus said in John chapter 10, and my sheep know my voice and another shepherd's voice, they will not follow. So we have to learn how to hear his voice. And that's the final component of this prayer thing is how good are you at knowing his voice? How good, have you, are, how good are you at knowing the voice of your shepherd? And this is something that I think trips a lot of us up. I know I have struggled with this tremendously in my life as a believer, when I, when I feel like God is leading me in a certain direction, I start thinking, okay, was that really God? Or is that me? Or, you know, is Satan playing tricks on me? Is that like, the Chick-fil-A? Is it the, yeah, right. Speaking I, to you. I did eat that pepperoni pizza late <laughs> last night. You know, is that where that came from? You know, and so this is something that we can really get hung up on. So, again, that question of can you really distinguish his voice? Can you really know his voice? And again, God speaks to us through his word. And so one of the things that we have to realize with that is as we pray, it does us no good to pray contradictory to God's word, you know? So since he speaks to us that way, he's already told us what he wants. Um, so, you know, if you're in a marriage and your marriage isn't going that well, there's no reason for you to pray, you know, God help me get a divorce from this person because scripture tells us that God hates divorce. That doesn't mean that if you're divorced that God hates you. It also doesn't mean that they're not times out there where divorce may be the only option that you have, but it does not do you really any good to pray, God, help me divorce this person or help me leave this person because he's already spoken to you on that. Um, and in that situation, the things that you should be praying for are for healing or for restoration or for wisdom. Ask God to lead you, um, to guide you, to give you discernment. And, and that word discernment is really just a fancy way of saying, God, help me see what's really happening here. Help me see it clearly. Um, so there are some things that you can pray in those difficult situations, but make sure you're praying according to God's word. He's already given us answers on so many things um, that if we just spend a little bit of time in his word, uh, we can figure out what God wants us to do. And if you're like, hey, Jay, you know what? I really, I don't know how to search his word that way. I don't know where to find some of these answers at. Um, then there are a couple of things that you can do. You can either reach out to someone who may know. Um, if you have a pastor that you're close to or a friend that you know, they know God's word, you can reach out to them. Um, there are times where I Google stuff. You know, I'll just type in Google. Hey, Google, you know, what, is, what does the Bible say about this topic? And Google will spit out references. It'll be like John 13, Matthew 4, and Ephesians 3. And I'll go and read those verses and see what God's word says about that. And you can do that as well. Um, so just don't go clicking on different websites, seeing what people say about those topics. Go to the Bible verses and see what the Bible says about those topics. I want to be clear on that. Yeah, and really uh, search it, too. So see what the context is and kind of where that passage is coming from. Maybe read the verses above and below the one that Google gives you. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, And a good way to do that is when you get those references, look at all of them unless it's like 40 of them, but if it spits out four references, look at all four of them to make sure they line up with one another. Yeah. Because sometimes something can be said in a particular context that may not necessarily apply to your context. Um, so just be careful with that part of it. But again, back to that question, can you really distinguish or do you really know his voice? 
And here's some things that I will tell you about God's voice. Number one, God's voice is always going to line up with his word. And that's why it's important that we start with his word. God's word never returns void. He never contradicts his word. His voice is always going to line up with his word. So if you are hearing a voice, and I don't mean that in a spooky way, but if, if you are hearing a voice or feel that you're being led in a certain direction, but it clearly does not follow God's word, that voice is not from God. You know, that voice is coming from somewhere else. Maybe it's your flesh leading you, your own desires leading you. Maybe it is Satan leading you. Uh, maybe you have uh, people in your life who you're choosing to listen to them over God. But the way that you know that you're hearing from God is that, number one, his voice will always line up with his word. Um, but number two, God's voice will always bring glory to him. And this is where prayer can get a little bit scary, is when we pray those things like, Lord, send me, or Lord, use me, things like that, Lord, lead me. Um, ultimately, God's going to bring glory to himself. And sometimes the way that God gets the most glory out of a situation is that you have to go through a little bit of hardship to get to the destination. Um, and we don't always like that. So when we pray things like, Lord, use me, or Lord, send me, we have to really know what we're praying and what we're asking God to do. God is going to be glorified in us and through us. Um, and so sometimes those situations can be a little bit difficult. Uh, so in this session of just really talking about listening to and knowing God's voice, there's a couple of things I want to just kind of lay out for you. And I know I'm doing most of the talking this time. Thank you, Leah, for being here with me while I talk. But uh, so here's the deal. If you want to clearly hear God's voice, here are some things that you can do. Um, number one, you need to kind of eliminate some of the distraction in your life. You know, when we are distracted by whatever the case may be, whether it's TV or the world around us, and I know um, sometimes current events, especially difficult ones, have a way of just consuming all of our attention. That distracts us from hearing God's voice. But it's often in those situations that he wants to speak to us the most. Um, so you have to learn to set aside distraction at times. Um, so the way that I personally try to do that is I try to set aside time in my day to hear from God, whether it's setting that time aside to just read his word and see what I get from it, or maybe I'm just going to pray or sit quietly um, and try to hear from God in a sense. And I'm not talking about, you know, walking outside in my front yard and the bush is on fire and God starts to speak to me because, you know, honestly, that would freak me out a little bit. Um, and I may not have the type of response you would think a pastor should to that. But what I'm talking about is really just setting aside intentional time to say, God, I'm going to hear from you and starting with his word. Uh, so you got to eliminate some distraction. The second thing is you have to have a relationship with God. Um, you have to have a personal relationship with him. You know, Leah and I have known each other since, what, 2016 now? Is that right? I think so. 2016? 2016. Um, and so if Leah calls me, whether I look at my caller ID on my phone or not, as soon as I hear her voice, I know it's her. But it's only because we've known each other for years and we have a relationship. You know, if, you're, if a stranger calls me and I don't look at the caller ID, I'm not going to have any clue who that is. And so sometimes we're sitting around saying, you know what, God, I want to hear your voice. You never speak to me. God said, I've been speaking to you all along. You just don't recognize me. Um, so I would ask, do you have a relationship with God where you are spending time with him, getting to know him in a way that would help you recognize his voice? Uh, because, again, Jesus said, my sheep know my voice and another shepherd's voice they will not follow. But it only comes through time. It only comes through time. So you have to spend time in his word. Spend time getting to know him. Um, so if you really want to clearly hear his voice, eliminate the distraction. Spend time in God's word so that you know what his voice sounds like. So that when you hear those voices, you don't have to doubt, um, but that you can rest assured that it's your heavenly father leading you. The last part I'll say about this is, is this. Sometimes you hear your voice and you're scared to follow it. But. If you have spent time with God, you know, I think it's Psalm 37, 4 that says, delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. And that phrase talking about delighting yourself in the Lord really means to take pleasure in him. So if God is your focus, if, if God is the thing in your life that you take pleasure in, he will put his desires in your heart. So as you're taking steps in life, as you're pursuing things in life, as, as you're going about your walk with Christ, 
your voice may not be a bad one if, if God has really put his desires in your heart. Your desires are going to line up with his. Um, so it's okay to follow those things. Again, the litmus test for you is, does it line up with God's word? You know, if your voice is saying, hey, I'm going to get rich by quitting my job and opening a brothel, you know, for those of you who are young and don't know what a brothel is, it's not a good place. All right. Um, but if your voice is, if that voice is telling you to do something like, hey, I'm going to get rich by selling cocaine, you know, that's illegal. Doesn't line up with God's word that has told us that we need to obey the laws that, that govern us, that we need to be respectful of our authority. Doesn't line up with that. So you know that that's not from God. Um, and so, again, his word becomes your litmus test in knowing this. And you may be saying, Jay, what does all of this have to do with prayer? I thought this was the second part of the prayer class. Well, anytime we pray, we ask God for something, we're expecting an answer. And if you don't know how to hear that answer or recognize that answer when it comes, you can go through life thinking that God has just left you unanswered. Like he's put you on hold and you're hearing elevator music and you don't know what's happening. And God would be saying to you, I've been speaking to you all along through my word and through the, the situations and circumstances you're in. You just don't recognize my voice. So listening to and knowing his voice are totally important and, and a part of prayer and sometimes an overlooked part of prayer that we don't really con consider. Um, so, and, and that kind of, I guess, brings us to a point of conclusion in this, unless Leah had something she wanted to add. Um, did you? No, you're good? Okay. You're going. All right. Yeah, girl, let's do this. <laughs> so that kind of brings us to uh, a conclusion point in this core prayer class. And here's some thoughts I would leave you with. Pray frequently. You know, invite God into the daily monotony of your life. Pray frequently. There is a story in scripture of King David and that I really love. And it's this story where these people come in and they raid David's camp and they steal all his possessions. They even take his wife, you know, and his children and everything. And they run off. And David, now, if I'm David, I'm getting my car. I'm calling up my boys. You know, we're getting whatever we need to get. And I'm going to get my wife back. But David prayed and he asked for God's permission to pursue them. You know, David was inviting God into his daily life. Even in the worst of circumstances, David took the time to invite God in. So I would encourage you to invite God into the daily monotony of your life. You know, pray over little things. Start building that relationship of communicating with God. Um, now, that doesn't mean you need to pray and say, God, should I have Frosted Flakes or Cocoa Puffs? Unless you want to. I mean, God's, Good. God's Good decision. Right. Hey, and it's an important one. It's how you start your day. But I'm not saying you need to pray over every little thing like that. But when you have decisions throughout the day, decisions that have some impact, pray over those things. Invite God in. So pray frequently. The next thing is pray confidently. You know, in prayer, in the first part of the prayer class, we talked about Ephesians 4, 14 through 16, about Jesus being our high priest. And that since he's our high priest, that we can go with confidence to the throne of grace to find help in a time of need. So if you are a child of God, you should pray with that confidence each and every time that you pray. Know that your father loves you, that he's for you, and that you can boldly ask for whatever it is that you need. Um, he said if you seek his kingdom first, he'll take care of your needs. So you can go with confidence with that. Um, and realize that if you pray something that's not according to his will, him not giving it to you is not him shutting you down. It's really him protecting you from something that was outside of his will. So, But pray with confidence, knowing that God is for you. And then next, pray according to his will. Uh, and you find his will in his word. Some people say, I don't know what God's will for me is. God has laid out his will in his word for us. So you can pray according to that and ask God to lead you through his word. And then pray, and this is going to sound weird, but pray as a first and last resort. Prayer should be the first thing you do, but it should also be the last thing that you do. Um, so your first inclination in every situation should be, let me go to my heavenly father. And then your last inclination in every situation should be, let me go to my heavenly father. Um, because you're going to get the answers that you need from him. It's okay to seek godly counsel from other believers. It's okay to call up your mom or your dad to ask for advice. But your first and your last stop should be with your heavenly father, asking him, Lord, what is your will? And let your will be done in my life. Um, so, yeah, that, that is my encouragement to you to listen to and know God's voice. Spend time in his word so you get to to recognize what your father's voice sounds like um, so that when you're praying and he's answering, you can hear those answers clearly. But then make sure you pray frequently, pray confidently, 
pray according to his will, and then pray as a first and last resort. Yeah, and I'd like to add to Jay to this. Um, a lot of times prayer can seem a little daunting, especially when you're talking about um, listening to his voice. And you just have to do it. I mm-hmm. think that's the biggest thing. You just have to start. Again, you may not be able to recognize that voice at first, especially if you're just starting on this prayer journey and you're just starting learning his word. You might not have a lot to base that off of. So if you keep going, you're going to keep going. We talk about a spiritual journey a lot yeah. um, in all of our core classes. And with a spiritual journey, it's this journey that starts at salvation and you're working your way to spiritual maturity. But prayer permeates throughout all of that because yep. we want the Lord's will to be done. And I think just really just think about practical ways that you can bring prayer into your life, mm-hmm. too. Um, we talk a lot about using prayer journals. It's not that you have to write out every little thing. I just know for me, I tend to forget <laughs> what mm-hmm. I've prayed for sometimes. And then if an answer comes up, sometimes it's easy just to be like, oh, like, it's just a coincidence. But no, like we can look back and if we prayed for that, we can see God's hand in it. So I'd really just encourage you to find a way. It doesn't have to be a prayer journal. Maybe it could be the notes in your phone when you pray about something. Write it down. It's really encouraging to track those because maybe you've been praying for something for a really long time and you're feeling discouraged. Or maybe you've been praying for something for a short, short time. But when you can track those answers to prayer, it really just gives you that encouragement. Again, the Lord isn't always going to answer how we think he's going to answer. Right. But seeing how he's working in those situations and tracking it, I think, can be really helpful. And it can build your faith. And, you know, mm-hmm. faith is something that at times seems to be in short supply for us. But that's a great way to allow God to build your faith is to pray and just watch him work. Um, and then you you begin to trust him more. You begin to rely on him more. You begin to let him be God and you be you and and you play the part that he's called you to play. And in life, it doesn't go perfect, but it gets so much better from there just in terms of him supplying you with the grace and the peace and the joy that you need so that like Paul, you can say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me really with the understanding that no matter what I go through, if I'm in his will and praying according to his word, that he's going to give me the things that I need to, to get through what I'm going through. Um, so, yeah, and that's where we'd like to leave you at with this class. We're going to stick around here in the chat for about 15 more minutes. If you have questions or comments, if there's things you want to ask, things you're unsure about, throw those in the chat. We'll be talking back and forth with you. Um, also, just want to encourage you guys, spend some time in God's word uh, just so you can get to know his voice and hear from your Heavenly Father. Now, you're going to see some resources pop up on the screen as well, some things that will help you as you pray. Leah mentioned prayer journals. I think they're a great thing, a great tool to use in your prayer life, especially if you're just starting off and want to kind of keep track of these are the things that I'm praying specifically about. Um, So you'll see some resources on the screen for you. But we do want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, We'll be putting all these concepts into practice um, as we go forward with prayer and just helping you guys in your daily walk with Christ. Cool. Thank you. Peace. Bye.